Sorry about that, too. Can I have it? Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are in the middle of a massive thunderstorm at the moment. Thunder's eased off, but the rain is pelting down. I don't know whether you can hear it or not on the roof. That's how loud it is. But we will plod on regardless. So, as I said, welcome to my kitchen table. I have my trusty cup of tea in my birthday mug to sip along as we go. We talk tonight about sneaky ways packaging costs you money. And I'm pretty sure that most of you already know that. So, anyway, we have loads to get through. I've got pages of notes as usual. So, who's with us tonight? Pop onto chat and say hello. Now, to no, I, don't I haven't got them. I haven't got anyone on chat. Let's see, no, no. I can't see anyone, so Hannah will have to tell me. Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here. And if I can't see it, then I should stay focused, shouldn't I? Okay. So, first things first. We're into the third week of July. How are you going with that no waste challenge? Nothing thrown out this week so far. I had leftovers for lunch today just because they needed to be used up and there was only enough for one person anyway. So I had those for my lunch, cleaned those out of the fridge. I used um, some bits and bobs that were in the fridge looking a bit um, lonely to make dinner tonight. So that got those out of the fridge. I will say I have composted four tomatoes, but that's because I bought a huge box of tomatoes on Sunday to make sauce, and out of all of them there were only four that were dodgy, and they were so dodgy that it was just easy to compost them. So that's what I did. Otherwise, nothing's gone. I've still got some capsicum to process for the freezer, but I'll get to that tomorrow. I've been doing a little bit each day. It's a process. A work in progress is what it is. So, all righty. Hmm. So, who's with us tonight, Hannah? I've got a scroll to the top. Scroll to the top. Sorry, oh. folks. Yvonne? Yvonne, hello. Bob. Hi, Barb. Lynette. Hi, Lynette. Freya. Hi, Freya. Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Another Lynette. Another Lynette. The other Ken. Lynette. Ken. Ken. Michelle. Michelle, beautiful. Julie. Julie. Maureen. Maureen, hello. Kerry. Kerry. Natalie. Natalie. Julie and Rod. Julie and Rod, beautiful. Uh, Diana. Diana. Leonie. Hello, Leonie. Kath. Hello, Kath. Glennis. Hello, Glennis. Priya. Hello, Priya. Leah. Leah. And hello, Leah. 301 Jules. And 301 Jules. Wow, that's quite a gang tonight, isn't that? Woohoo. So. How does packaging cost you money? Sneaky, sneaky. The biggest bugbear of my life is the way packaging costs us money. To the tune of, I did a blog post about this a few years ago, to the tune of a couple of hundred dollars a year just on cosmetic type things. So things like good old toothpaste. This is a reasonably new tube. I didn't have an old tube to show you. Toothpaste. Makeup, lipstick. We pay a fortune for these things, and you get them. You, I use it and use it and use it, and I tend to have a favourite, so it gets used and used and used all the time. And then it gets so low. You get the cotton bud or the lip brush, and you use it some more and use it some more, and you can get months out of that lipstick by doing that. And if you just toss it away, you're tossing money in the bin. Okay. Eye cream. This one's nearly empty. I'll hold it up to the light. Hold up to the light. I should be able to see. This one's nearly empty. Not sure it's working, but it's nearly empty. 
but there's still cream in there. But when you unscrew the top and you've got that little tiny nozzle and squish, 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 and nothing comes out, what I do, and I didn't bring the scissors with me, I slip the end off it and then I get a little tiny spatula or a cotton bud and scrape around the inside of it and I put it in a little lip balm pot that I have a nice clean lip balm pot and use it from there because it's expensive stuff and I probably get another three to four weeks out of it by doing that. So that's money in the bin if I don't do that. But what started me on this years and years and years ago was good old sorbeline in the pump pack. Now, pump packs are really convenient and we all have them for all sorts of things. Hand wash, I like them on the shampoo bottle, the conditioner bottle, whatever. They're really handy. But I'd buy the sorbeline on half price from Big W at the time I was buying it on half price, which was really good. That was fine. But after a little while, it would, I knew there was some in there, but it wouldn't pump out because the hose on the pump just isn't long enough. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And I know it can't go right to the bottom because it needs to be able to suck up the air as you pump it. But, oh, my giddy aunt, that is such a nuisance. So, and again... The nozzle on these things is really skinny. You can't get a spatula in there. Move forward to the weekend. Trusty husband with his little hacksaw thing actually cut the bottom off it for me and I was able to scrape it out into a nice clean jar and use it. And I had months worth of, and I think another three or four months worth of sorbeline out of that jar, out of that bottle. That's, they're all sneaky packaging tricks. But it happens not just with our cosmetics and our toiletries. What about things like the upside down squeezy packs for honey, for aioli, this is aioli, for aioli, for mayo, for toppings, for all sorts of things, pizza sauces, you can get all sorts of things in squeezy packs. They're always upside down in our fridge because that just makes sense because they need to be upside down so everything will squirt out. But, oh, my goodness. Again, I just hack them off and scoop it out when we need to. Peanut butter jar. Peanut butter jar would be the bane of my life. Not so much Vegemite but definitely peanut butter because it has the bit with the ridges for the top and then it comes down it's got a sort of a lip on it before it goes down and then you've got those rounded bubbly bottoms and peanut butter gets stuck in there and you can't get to it with a knife so do you want to remember i've talked about these things a few times trusty spatulas my silicon spatulas this one's actually hannah's mm -hmm. yep but that's one of your betty quirk ones but it's really good because it will get in under the lip of that peanut butter jar and I can make four or five peanut butter sandwiches with what is left in the jar. Or, in my sauce. or into a satay sauce, yes, sometimes. But it really annoys me. I have everyone trained now so that they know not to throw out the peanut butter jar when they think it's empty because I scrape it and then scrape it into the top of the new jar when it's opened because otherwise that's money going into the bin and frankly I can't afford to throw away money and I'm pretty sure no one else can either or they really don't want to if they think they can so sneaky packaging is so annoying the other thing that gets to me sorry guys I'm getting a bit dry because I'm getting a bit excited about this the other thing that gets to me is Parcels. Now, Hannah got a parcel the other day. What was it? Got a punch. Oh, she bought a, a little tiny, not so big, little tiny um, punch, tab punch. The box was bigger than a shoe box. When the guy knocked on the door with this punch, I thought, oh, I wonder what she's like. Couldn't wait for her to get home to open it to see what goodies were in it. It was a punch. One tiny little thing. It was probably about maybe three inches square, if that. In this box, it was bigger than a shoe box. And it was packed with all this um, 
shredded papery stuff that we had to get rid of. Now, shredded paper can go into compost and it can go into worm farms or your bakashi bucket, but it's still a pain to have to do it. The cardboard has to be torn up and put into the recycle bin or wet. If you wet it down, you can put it into your worm farm or your compost, but it's still a pain. And why do we need to have that much packaging? It costs money because those parcels are, um, the freight's costed um, on a cubic measurement for those parcels. So it costs a fortune. The bigger the box, doesn't matter how much it weighs, the bigger the box, the more it's going to cost. And we have to foot that bill. Hate sneaky packaging. Anyway. What do you know? Sneaky packaging. I hate sneaky packaging, folks. It's wrong. Anyway. But there's all sorts of ways that packaging is sneaky and gets to us. And it costs us money when we throw out perfectly good stuff because we can't get it out of the packaging. But it costs us money initially because we pay for that packaging. And then it costs us money again because indirectly we have to pay for the disposal of that packaging. So we pay through it. We put it into our recycle bin, it goes onto our rates or it goes to the tip and gets sorted. We pay for that. It costs money and that is a sneaky cost that we shouldn't have to pay. So I hate sneaky packaging. I love the idea of um, no packaging. And when I do a normal fruit and veg shop, I take my own bags. I made bags out of um, veggie bags out of an old curtain I got from the op shop and it was $3.20, massive big curtain. And I initially thought I was going to use it in our bedroom and it was just a little bit too short. So then I was stuck with this curtain. I made veggie bags out of it. Now they weigh around 15 grams each, which isn't much and that doesn't add a lot to the cost of the veggies. So I don't mind paying for that. Um, I don't buy expensive fruit and veg anyway, so it doesn't add that much to my bill. But I'm not bringing home plastic bags and I'm not putting them in landfill. So I'm not sneakily adding to the cost. There's instructions for those on the Cheapskates Club website. They're on my blog. They're all over the place. I've made them for gifts for people in sets. They're really handy and very, very um, easy to use. Just on a drawstring, no problem. The first few times I tried to use them at the um, supermarket at our local Coles down here, they looked at me like I was nuts and probably I was at the time because this was oh, eight, nine years ago. I've had them for a long time. So I probably was quite odd compared to the other shoppers. Now they know me down there and they just know I'm quite weird anyway. Good old Pellegrinos doesn't bat an eyelid quite happy for me to use my bags doesn't wear them at all and I'm quite happy to use them too so that's a packaging a thing of packaging that I have eliminated from our house we still use um, the plastic supermarket bags when I get them I use them for rubbish um, to tie up the yucky wet rubbish that goes in the bin there's some things you just can't compost or feed to the worms they have to, that has to go in the bin and I don't like irky bins so and in winter I can't clean the bin every week like I do in summer so I use the bags for garbage and they line the bins the in bins in the bathroom waste paper baskets and things like that but in my waste paper baskets in the um, under our desks and in our bathrooms I've got a blob of blue tack and I've stuck in the middle of the base and I've stuck the bag to it because nothing wet or icky goes into the um, waste paper baskets under our desks. And so I just, when it gets full, goes into the recycle bin and the plastic bag stays. And the one in my waste paper basket under my desk has been there for oh, over 12 months. So a little bit of blue tack in the bottom to hold it in place. When it does get irky, all I have to do is lift it out and throw it. But it will have been well used. Okay. Now, um, sorry.
I've got everyone trained to do the um, peanut butter jar. I have everyone trained to do the toothpaste. The best thing, I think, in years was the soft toothpaste packaging. I remember when I was a little girl, they were um, metal tubes, aluminium foil tubes, and they were quite stiff and you used to roll it up from the end or you put it in this gadget and twisted it up to get all of the stuff out of it. And those gadgets don't work with these um, softer tubes, but it is just as easy to massage it all the way up. You can probably see it's going to explode. And then when it gets to the end, I actually lie on the bench and get a the flat blade of a bread knife and scrape it up and get more out of it still before I cut it open. It's not cheap. You don't want to throw any of it away. We're aiming for zero waste in our kitchens. We should be aiming for zero waste across everything we use. And if we can beat the companies with packaging that it's going to cost us money, why shouldn't we? Okay. Now, okay. Oh, an experiment I did with a lipstick. Good old lipstick. Now, this is a Maybelline. Max Factor. Max Factor. Okay. Thank you. Was this one you gave me? Must yes. have been. Max Factor. Okay. They're not cheap, as I said. Get to the bottom of it. So, when I got to the bottom of my favourite and I used the lip brush as much as I could, I decided to actually work out how much was left in the tube when most people would think it was all used up. So I got a little cosmetic spatula, a little tiny white one that we have, and I scraped it all out onto my digital scales. And let me tell you how much. It, uh, scraped it all out and, okay, 1.4 grams excuse me, came out. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but when you consider the whole lipstick is only about... I've lost how big the tube is. 4.2 grams. And I there was still 1.4 grams left in it. And it cost... $4.03 a gram, I was actually putting over $4 in the bin if I hadn't scraped it out. Now, it was a bit of a, a fiddle and it was something I did out of curiosity, but it was such an eye-opener because, yes, the lipstick, I had had it for a long time, about a year, but that's beside the point, isn't it? Because I was still, due to the sneaky way it's packaged, putting over $4 of my hard-earned money into the bin if I hadn't scraped it out. So it got scraped out and it got put into, again, into a nice clean little, it was a little jam jar. Um, what, you know those little individual jam jars you get in motels and things like that? Nice clean one of those, lid on it, and I was able to use it for months again afterwards. And I didn't put four dollars, and it would be about four dollars and fifty in the in the bin. Sneaky packaging, really sneaky way. Not sneaky packaging so much as sneaky way packaging costs us money. We need to think about these things. If you're on a tight budget, you'll understand that throwing four dollars away means you can't go and buy another lipstick. You need to wait. So. Think about those things. Um, same with the Sorbeline. If you use it, the toothpaste, the eye cream, the makeup, this is getting to the end. I noticed tonight when I was using it, it's getting harder and harder. Now, this is quite a firm plastic tube. It's actually really hard to push in the plastic. And it doesn't actually unscrew. It's a sneaky, sneakier one. So it doesn't actually unscrew. So it will be trimmed off across the bottom there. I'll show this way. Across there, it'll be trimmed off. I'll scrape it out into a jar and I will use clean fingers to 
Get it out. Sorry? Why is that clean? Yeah, always clean. Always wash my hands to um, get it out. Priya has the pop, the Kmart popcorn maker, but it doesn't get inside him like way any hacks. Like on how to use it. Oh, the red one. Oh, I don't know. Uh, paper bag over the top. Is it just the dome on the top of the lid that's the issue? If that's the case, then a paper bag and a loose rubber band or a loose string. So it's got room to for the popcorn to pop. But try that and see if that works. Yeah. Um, they're going crazy, are they? Um, Miss Aussie Thunder said she recently purchased aluminium lunch boxes from Aldi and she's loving them. Well done. I saw those, the bento style boxes with the dividers. Mm -hmm. Very good. I saw those in the catalogue. Last thing we need is more lunch boxes, but I was tempted. She's lost her spot. Right? Okay. Um, Natalie asked, does anyone else use the framing hand soap dispenser and water down normal hand soap? Yep. All the time. All the time. And if you go to my blog and even on the Cheapskates website, there's instructions on how to do it if you're not familiar with it. I've had the same foaming bottle for oh, six or seven years, I think, the one in the kitchen. Easy as. If you're going to use, use regular hand soap in it, you only use about a third of the bottle. Fill about a third of the bottle and top it up. Don't fill it with... Um, a hand soap refill because that won't work. She, Priya says the microwave door is not big enough to hold the popcorn maker. Oh, I don't like know. Popcorn maker, does she? Priya, I don't know. Take a photo and post it on Cheapskates channel. Okay, Priya, um, Hannah has said, Priya, can you take a photo of your popcorn maker? And post it over on Cheapskate's chatter and someone, if we can't, someone might have a hack for you. I know when we got our new microwave earlier this year, I was very concerned that I didn't think it was tall enough to take my um, stack cooker, but it just fits. So I did take it with me to the shop to make sure because I use it a lot. So I'm not really sure. Okay. Kerry says she waters down shampoo and conditioner. Yes, Kerry, I do too. 50 50. Have done it for years. To, and I do with my dishwashing detergent as well. My um, Morning Fresh or Tandil from Aldi, whichever one I've got, is divided 50 50. I have two bottles always on the go. Top it up with water, give them a gentle shush to combine them. And I have been told that Aldi hates me telling people to do that. But seriously, folks, you don't need to buy Morning Fresh or Palm Olive or whatever. The Tandil from Aldi works. The concentrate works really well if you dilute it by half. And I know they hate me telling you to do that. But seriously, it's that good that you can dilute it by half. In fact, I've actually diluted it by more when we've been running really low on it towards the end of the year when I haven't done my stockpile shop and I haven't wanted to go and do it yet. I've sometimes diluted it even more. It is a tad runny, so you do need to only open the nozzle halfway and it works fine. I don't have a problem with it. Joy says she uses uh, an old school paper bag for popcorn. Popcorn, yes. Um, Joy's on my way. Hi, Joy. I don't, um, we don't have paper bags anymore because we don't do lunches, lunch orders. I used to have paper bags for the kids who get their lunch order once a week, courtesy of Granny, but um, we don't do lunch orders anymore. So now when it comes time to line the cake tins for Christmas, Christmas cakes, I have to go on a paper bag hunt. For brown paper bags. Kerry said she got abused by a hairdresser on another group for watering it down. Oh, well, you know what? Jealousy is a curse. I just turn a blind eye. Hannah just says she just turns a blind eye. Look, I 
was told years ago by a hairdresser that did a really good job on my hair and he trained in London under Vidal Sassoon and Max was just brilliant with, with hair and he actually hated people using conditioner. He said there's absolutely no need. If you rinse your hair properly, you don't need conditioner and you should only have to um, tiny bit about the size of a 10 cent piece he said on wet hair and he said the secret is to make sure your hair is thoroughly wet and it's true if you just stick your head under the shower like that and then try to shampoo it of course it doesn't it doesn't lather up your hair needs to be really wet so that's all i do i do use conditioner i'm i'm afraid of knots <laughs> even in my short hair i'm afraid of knots well, I only buy shampoo and conditioner once a year because yeah. I buy the one litre bottles. Yeah. That lasts me 12 months. Yes. So I guess I guess there will always be people that are as cheap as me and there will always be people who would never dream of anything that I do regardless of how much money it saves. And I suppose they're the people that keep everyone else in business because I'm pretty sure I don't keep very many people in business unless they sell really good fruit and veg or really good bulk herbs and spices or you know otherwise really good oats and stuff like that otherwise I'm not a shopper and I'm not a spender so we need the swings and roundabouts I guess I'm just glad that I don't have the stress that they have when they get the bills at the end of each month because I'd be I'd be greyer than I am now if I had to worry about it. And I know that um, we eat well, we live very well, we go without we go without nothing that we need, and we have just about everything we want. Every now and then I'll think, oh, I'd like whatever, but it's just a like, it's not a need, it's not really a want. Wayne will come home and go, oh, maybe we should do whatever and we'll think about, you know, I really can't be bothered. We are pretty we are pretty right. Now, we've worked hard to get to this position. It's taken us years of work because it is work, you know, watching your budget, making meal plans, thinking about what's in the fridge to be used up so that you're not throwing money away, um, cutting, cutting the kids' hair when they were little, um, I used to do the boys' hair. Then I would just trim off Hannah's hair. Thank goodness it was long. She was in a competition with a friend from school to see who could get the longest hair. That was simple. Just hold it. I did the old um, sticky tape trip, like trick like mum used to do with mine and brush her hair down, layer of sticky tape and then cut it off. It was, you know, it saved, back even back then, it was $10 to get her hair done at the hairdresser trimmed off her fringe when she had a fringe it was easy to do all those things saved us no, not say kept a lot of money in our bank account that we used for things that we really wanted and that we really needed so it might have been nice i suppose every now and then to go and get my hair done get my hair done every four weeks instead of every eight weeks but seriously as long as it was clean and neat and tidy, it didn't really bother me and it didn't bother my husband. So I kept that, you know, $35 in my purse. Little things like that. We lost a question, no? 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 Okay. So when it comes to scraping out jars, I'm happy to do it. I scraped out, I opened a tin of tomato soup tonight to add to some pasta sauce and I used a spatula to scrape it out to make sure I got all of it and I scraped the lid. When we empty the Vegemite jar, I save it. I don't refill it until I've rinsed it out with some warm water and I use that to make gravy or I add it to a casserole or it gets tipped into some soup if I'm making soup. Nothing gets wasted. I had a teacher, I remember a teacher, um, my grade two teacher, Miss Burgoyne, she was an older lady then, would have Vegemite in hot water every morning at playtime. That was her morning drink, hot water with a teaspoon of Vegemite in it. Sounds, ugh, but it's actually quite good. So, you know, I'll even use it for that and make a hot drink if I need to. 
nothing as far as I can nothing gets wasted someone asked a question I'm not sure whether it was in the forum or on cheapskates chatter just recently about honey that had candied and what they could use it for well it's it's fine to use as is if you want to nuke it or you can just sit the jar in some um, hot water if it's in plastic don't you if it's in a plastic bottle don't use boiling water if it's a glass jar you can use boiling water and just give it a stir every now and then until it um, dissolves again and the deep decrystallizes it's fine to use you don't need to to waste it there's no reason just because it's gone to candy and crystallize that you have to throw it out it's still perfectly good honey and you can use it you can use it as is um, you can beat it and use it. it takes a bit of work but you can do it if you really want to so you don't need to throw those things out um, the juice from tinned fruit if you open tinned fruit tinned pineapple for instance and you use the pineapple what do you do with the juice sometimes i'll drink it because i quite like it but other times i'll freeze it and then use it to make punch or I'll thaw it out and mix it with other fruit juices that I've saved from other tins of fruit and make ice blocks in summer with it. It doesn't go to waste. It can be used um, to make jelly. If you use gelatin or agar, if you don't want to use gelatin, and fruit juice, and you'll have a fruit-flavoured jelly. It's really easy to do and you're not wasting anything and the packaging isn't being holding you back the sneaky sneaky bits aren't holding you back okay. so i guess what i'm what i'm trying to get across is when you're shopping look at the packaging and think about how much that's a good sign that's a better this is a better one think about how much it costs you and then how much you potentially could be throwing away if you aren't able to get all of it out all of the product out because you want you want to get what you pay for and yes we do pay for the packaging but we want to get all the product out so think about it and if there's an alternative perhaps that might work better for you Otherwise, you just have to get creative with hacking the bottom off things, unscrewing lids, soaking honey in hot water and things like that so that you are using all the product that's hidden in the packaging. Thank goodness socks are socks because otherwise imagine the amount of socks we go through in this house, $1,000 a year would be gone. We were hiding socks, you know. Aerosol cans are another thing. How often, I know I've had often had a conversation with Wendy about hairspray and it works for a little while and then all of a sudden it just does not work and you swap the nozzle over and no, it won't work. Well, it's pretty much cactus if you can't get it to work. So you do have to throw that out. So if you can find a hairspray that actually works on a trigger and there are some around, that works on a trigger that will ensure that you are able to use it all um, or you can make your own there's a recipe on the website for making hairspray i think hannah might have found it for me sugar and water sugar and water there you go your hair will be as sweet as you'll attract all sorts of bugs out in the sunshine in summer with your sugar water hair Sorry, folks. I need new glasses. I'm just going to get them. All right. So I worked out a couple of years ago it would be two to three hundred dollars a year that this sneaky packaging could potentially be costing us if I wasn't aware of it. Thank you, sweet pea. She's going to pour me a cup of tea. Thanks, Alan. It's enough. And. Um, that's a lot of money. That's a month's, you know, three hundred dollars. It's a month's grocery budget if you're on the three hundred dollar a month food challenge. If you really want to throw it away, we all know how hard it is to stick to that three hundred dollars a month. 
So do we really want to be throwing that away? I'm pretty sure I don't. Or $300 is a really nice weekend away somewhere. It's um, school holiday entertainment for the kids over the Christmas holidays and then some trips to the movies flight and the zoo Bali. and whatever. It's a flight to Bali. There you go. Hello, Pamela, if you're watching. Um, she's in, in Bali enjoying the warmth at the moment. It's a lot of money and you need to think of it as not just the, the few cents here and the few cents there, but as the sum, the total amount for the year and that's when it hits you that it's costing and costing in a big way because we don't want to be spending all that money. Um, Yvonne wants to know, can you make iron spray? What is iron spray? Oh, like Fabulon type stuff, Yvonne. Um, starch, spray starch. You can do, if you want a starch, you should be able, I think you can still get the silver starch, which was the powder and you made it up with water um, into a liquid and you could dilute that to make a, an ironing spray. A really nice, simple one that smells nice. Um, you'll need clean boiled water or distilled water and a spray bottle. About, if it's a 500 ml spray bottle, you'll need about a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol that just stops um it just stops the water from going musty and mildewy and then some essential oil lavender or orange or whatever you want whatever your favorite fragrance is and probably 10 to 12 drops of essential oil pop it in give it a really good shake up and then mist your clothes with that and iron them on a steam iron and they smell nice. Wayne goes to work smelling like lavender every day. No, it doesn't really. I don't use lavender on his shirts. But it would be, he wouldn't let me. I could imagine. You have no idea the complaints I get if he went to work smelling like lavender. Um, can you imagine Dad smelling like lavender? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. but that's a really nice ironing spray but do add the rubbing alcohol just the isopropyl from the chemist it's not terribly expensive and you only need about a tablespoon give it a good shake up and um it works really well the other thing is of course to be super efficient and actually get your clothes off the line or the clothes horse before they're completely dry and iron them while they're still just barely damp and then they're as crisp as anything the shirts and trousers and tablecloths and pillow slips and hankies come out so nice if you get them and they're just just barely damp so they're almost completely dry and that seems to be enough to give them beautiful creases and a nice body and I have some linen shirts that I do that too I wait till the, they're still if it almost so that if you put it on you think oh this is a bit damp that's sort of amount of moisture you need in them and iron them like that works really well um Julia would like to know did you knit the tea cozy and do you have a pattern for it oh my tea cozy it's, it's a bit wonky on this teapot though. it is a bit wonky on this teapot because this teapot's got a funny Lid. Funny lid. Uh, yes, I did knit the tea cosy and I even crocheted the flower that goes on top of it. And it doesn't really fit this teapot very well at all. I it my good. little one. Yeah. Um, I did knit it and the pattern is um, on the website. Um, it's really, it's a really simple pattern too. It's just a, a knit to pearl to rib pretty much. And... Um, all I did was measure the from the widest point to the widest point on the teapot. You can't see down there, you teapot. Measure from the widest point to the widest point to get how big it needed to be. And then from the bottom, the bottom over the top to the other side, over the widest point to get how long it needed to be. And knitted 
and then I just did um, folded it, pretty much folded it in half. And on either end, I've got it around the wrong way. On either end, I just um, stitched up a little bit from the bottom to make the spots for the um, spout and the handle. But yeah, the pattern is on on the website. Um, God, it's a very old tea cozy now. I love tea cozies. They're rather mm -hmm. cute, aren't they? They do a really good job. It's sort of one of those old-fashioned things that is coming back into vogue because everyone's starting to make tea and teapots again. Um, Kerry would like to know, do you know where to get cheap bread flour from other than Costco? Costco is the cheapest bread flour at the moment. It was... Uh, 88 cents per 100 grams? 88 cents, yeah. 88 cents per kilo. Per 100 grams? No. So that would have made it $8.80 oh, yeah. a kilo. 88 cents Sorry. a kilo at Costco at the moment. That's the cheapest there is around. I actually gave in. I'll pull that face again. I gave in at the weekend and I bought another 20 kilos of flour and Costco was the cheapest. So Costco got my business, unfortunately. And so because our flour was running low and it is getting really expensive. But you also saved. Yes. yes, I did. So, um, yeah, so Costco is the cheapest for flour at the moment, unfortunately. Um, sadly, I think, but never mind. Uh, then I think Aldi, Coles and Woolworths are all pretty much the same price now on their flour. Um, but that changes from week to week anyway. Um, Should go yeah, you could check IGA, you could try IGA, but I'm thinking they're probably around the same price. The black and gold would still be around the same price as um, Coles or Woolies. The other thing to do would be to ring a mill direct, a flour mill direct, or go to, if you have a, a health food shop that you're really friendly with, go to them and ask them to get you a price on a 25 kilo or 50 kilo bag when I buy my spelt flour, I buy it straight from um, the health food shop they go to in Croydon, but they order it in a 50 kilo bag for me and it's half the price, less than half the price of buying it from the supermarket to do that. And they're happy to do that for me because I buy a lot of other stuff from them too. So perhaps ask, but yeah. Flour is so expensive, which brings me to Thursday night, folks, because meat's so expensive too. I think meat's going to become um, a rarity for some of us soon. It's so expensive. So Thursday night I'm going to be talking about stretches, meal stretches, and how to um, still have the soups and stews and casseroles and pies and pasties and sausage rolls and rissoles and meatloaves and things that we love. But with less meat and perhaps more serves out of them so that we can stretch that little bit of meat just that little bit further. I know I'm married to a feed the man meat man and if there's no meat, he's sort of eyes roll back in his head and he starts to shake and he gets very upset. So we need meat. I need to keep meat in our, in our diet. But I do stretch it as much as I can and I'm starting to stretch it even more again. We, we, going back to what it was like years and years ago because it's just so expensive. Yeah, anyway. That's it. No more questions? No, everybody's happy? I don't know why. I can't see what any other comments are. They've just all done appeared. Never mind. All right, so watch that sneaky packaging. Watch how much it costs you. Think of ways to, don't waste my lipstick. <laughs> Think of ways to get everything you possibly can out of it. And, you know, it might be as simple as, going back to the honey, when you get, you know, I mean, I scrape the peanut butter jar, I add water to the Vegemite jar. I have been known to nuke the honey jar because honey sticks to the sides and pour it out. 
I scrape the jam jar with a spatula. I scrape the lemon butter jar with a spatula to make sure we get all of it out and especially the lemon butter because lemons are expensive and butter's outrageous at the moment. So lemon butter is a rare treat. Um, and eggs are expensive too. It's a really rare treat these days. In fact, I haven't made any for a long time because it's just too expensive. So all those things that we enjoy, we can still have as long as we make sure we use it all, absolutely all of it, and stop putting money in the bin. Okay. Okay. Sound like a deal? Sound like a plan? We're all going to do that? Okay. Well, in that case, I shall let you all go. The thunder stopped. The rain stopped for the time being. Or at least we can't hear it anymore, thank goodness. If you need rain, I hope you get it. If you don't need rain, I hope you don't get it. We need rain, so I'm glad we've got it coming down. Should be nice for the next couple of days here, which means I might get some time in the garden again. Thursday night, we'll talk about meal stretches and how we can use them. And they're probably, everything I have is probably in your kitchen already anyway, so you won't need to buy anything special to do it. Just different ideas and ways I have of making that meal go further and making that meat go further. So on that note, I shall say good night. Thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed the show, please hit the thumbs up underneath. If you're new and haven't subscribed, please do. And the little bell will click the little bell and it will give you notifications every time there's a new um, video coming up you'll be notified so you won't miss out um, join us over on cheapskates chatter we have a lot of fun over there chatting about stuff and sharing information and ideas and goodness only knows what and i shall say good night and i will see you on thursday in the kitchen thank you again for joining us